I picked up a mini PC because I saw no videos on YouTube about it. It is the Byte Nook AK34, a mini PC rocking an Intel Celeron N3450 and 6GB of RAM. While I didn't find any videos on it, that doesn't mean they aren't out there, and this design has been covered under a few different brands. The video I did during the unboxing is a little long, but I almost uploaded it due to my own commentary. Inside the box are an HDMI cable, a power supply, and a thumb drive that is very suspicious at this point. Under the computer, there is a silica pack that reads do not eat in quotation marks, a SATA drive adapter with screws, and a user's manual. The computer comes in a plastic bag, and the top sticker with tips on it is very blue. Under it is a shiny surface, and I decide to put the sticker back. On what I think is the front is the power button, a micro SD card slot, dual network adapters, and a headphone jack. Around the side is the power input, five USB 3.0 jacks, and dual HDMI jacks that are only labeled HD, which seems a little odd. Post testing with Windows, I decide to see what's inside. The owner's manual shows you have to take the feet off, but never mention taking the screws out. It's a little weird to leave that out, but after stabbing myself getting the feet off, there they are. A Phillips number one is too big, but a double zero works fine with one exception. On one of the screws, the head is stripped. I tried to use a screwdriver and a hammer to score a mark as I don't have a chisel here, but that didn't work. What I ended up using was a T7 Torx bit, hammering it in the screw head, and then it came out, and I was able to get the bottom off. Like some other mini PCs, that is where you can mount a drive and I'll be putting the raw gob drive in. The storage it came with is a 128GB AirDisk M.2 SATA SSD with a weird little plastic washer built onto the end. Under that is the Intel dual band AC 7265 Wi-Fi. There are a further four screws holding the motherboard in place and removing them it reveals the CPU heatsink and fan. It looks like it could be removed, but I'm not going to go that far with it. As we can see, there is no expandable memory on this board. Mounting of the 2.5 inch SATA drive in the chassis wasn't difficult with the screws lining up. Putting the ribbon cable in there isn't hard either once you figure out the orientation. The BIOS is pretty basic. The one area of concern for me is there is no way that I can see to turn off the PXE boot option. You can move it down in priority, but it's always there. It comes preloaded with Windows 10 Pro, and as far as performance, well, it wasn't stellar, but it wasn't terrible either. For benchmarks, the AirDisk SATA SSD performed around what I'd expect, 560 megabytes per second read and 462 megabytes per second write as recorded with Crystal Disk Mark 8.0.4. CPU-Z with the built-in benchmark it registered 160.7 on single core and 631.9 on all four cores. Cinebench R23 was a little painful to watch, but after an hour it registered a single score of 212 points. Multi-core finished with a score of 626 points and an MP ratio of 2.96. Inside Linux, running the Sysbench CPU benchmark it registered 1,134 events per second on single core and 4,329 running all four cores. Geekbench 5 for Linux scored it at 322 single and 1,163 multi-core. Back in Windows, watching YouTube videos in 4K was possible if low enough of a frame rate. It was dropping frames, but not like on the 4K 60p video that I played afterwards. It was losing frames with that video at 1080p as well, so I think it might not be great for that. It should do better with local files, but I didn't end up testing those. Oh, and on the mysterious thumb drive, there was a Chrome OS that could be installed. Overall, for the $140, this isn't a terrible machine. It sips power, running around 6 watts at idle, and barely breaking 10 watts going full throttle. It comes with Windows 10 Pro, but I'd recommend doing a fresh install of it. Even though there doesn't seem to be any bloatware or suspicious programs, through Windows Update optional driver downloads, I can tell someone had a monitor hooked up to this machine before I had it. 
I didn't reinstall Windows on this machine though, because I have another use for it, which will be highlighted in another video. Tell me what you think of these mini PCs. Are you concerned about their origins and cybersecurity? Do you think wiping the OS is a good step to take? The low power draw of this machine is a plus for me, but the sound that the fan makes is a little more than I had expected. That is it for this review video. Thanks for watching. I hope that it wasn't terrible.